home is where the heart is. You hear that saying all the time. That's the base of a good, healthy living. And one of the key differences between us and the mainstream programs is that reconnection to community. And that's, the, that's what's really helping us. Our cultural worker and the program that she does helps bring people back to the fire. We recognized before we even set up shop and started to serve people that it was really about taking them from the community that they're living in and creating community around them. We often talk about, you know, it takes a village to raise a child. Well, I think it takes a city to bring someone home. I love it. In 2011, we released a report called Our Health Counts, and that started the relationship with the city in discussing the homelessness of Indigenous people in Hamilton. We did an Indigenous-focused point-in-time count where we had a magnet event, and we came up with over 43% of the people who we, we interviewed were experiencing homelessness that were Indigenous. And we're sitting extremely high compared to our 3% uh, Indigenous population. There is a housing crisis going on, and it's, it's much more far-reaching than just Hamilton. So when the opportunity arose to find homes for people where we didn't judge whether or not they had an addiction or a mental health problem, but we just wanted to help them, to save them from having to sleep on a cold street at night, it was a no-brainer. The way that it used to be done is that you couldn't get into housing through a program until you started taking care of your addictions and stuff, but they found out that it's not possible for people, which is why Housing First is the new best practice. Yeah, absolutely. Immediate access to housing with no readiness requirements, with a recovery orientation, it's the only way to get people to be in a spot where they can look at recovery, uh, is to get them into housing first. And we never say you're not housing ready. You, we'll house you and then we'll work on your other problems and your issues. I worked at the same job for 17 years, and I, one day I just couldn't get out of bed. I, I just had no energy, and I thought, oh, I just can't make it, I'm sick. After I lost the house and the wife and the kids, and you know, all I had was like a, a sheet and stuff that I, you know, that I moved with, because I moved with a cart. Housing ties into all things health-related. Somebody is unable to have a safe place to keep their medication if they don't have housing, which means it'll be stolen from them, it can get lost. Or if they need a health card, you have to have an address. Well, I lost my house and I had heirlooms and stuff that I kept with me. And I got like all my income tax papers, all my, my birth certificates were with my health card problem. They threw everything out of mine. Really personal things, you know, my Bible, Things like that. They toss it like it was yesterday's garbage. And when you don't have housing, the barrier is to stack and stack and stack to the point where you don't feel like you can overcome them. I don't know, I just became someone else after. So Rick was uh, homeless really on and off for about 10 years and he, he was very sick when he first was presented to Homeward Bound. Well, I got here, I weighed probably 118 pounds. I was pale, I had pneumonia. There was some COPD that was quite serious and undiagnosed. And, you know, just that social disconnect, you know, from family and friends. I happened to come here and they welcomed me with open arms. Anything they can to, to, to be on your side, to make you relax, to, to make you feel secure. You know, seeing me for who I am and not what happened. It, it, gave me the, it gave me confidence again like, that I'd lost. It was his birthday soon after he came into the program and we, uh, we got him a cake and we sang to him and had a bit of a party and he said that that hadn't happened for 10 years and that's a couple of years ago now and, I, and there's a very big difference in the Rick that we see today than the Rick that we saw two years ago. A lot of our clients have a lot of barriers that they have to face, um, whether it's bad credit, no identification, no bank account, having mental issues, having uh, addiction issues, and they have so many barriers put in front of them. I was a chef. Yeah. I want to go back, but yeah, it's my reserve, you know, and these graves are so full, you know. And what happened to my wife in Wiki? These drugs, you know, and she was 25 when she passed away. 
Um, when I first met with Dwayne, I actually met him at the health center, and um, he was pretty aggressive at the time, but it turned out that he has an acquired brain injury. I, I actually went to high school with him, and he is not the same person that I knew back then, unfortunately. He's, he's had a, a hard run at life, and I'm glad that I was able to help him though, because a lot of people didn't want to deal with him at the time. Oh, I'm happy here. Got this apartment. Yeah, I got this furniture here. I love it. He needed a little bit of extra attention, you know. It wasn't just me that did it, it was the whole team that did it. Uh, we feel blessed to be a part of our team because Homeward Bound is a little bit different um, than sort of mainstream Housing First models. For instance, you're not supposed to have health care on your team in Housing First. Um, we have a nurse practitioner capable of doing assessments. She goes to people's houses. She's able to prescribe medication. And she makes those connections to get people to see doctors, to see specialists. And we provide a supportive program for two years, actually, which is very significant and I think very important because, you know, it, you can house someone, but actually sustaining that housing is, is a more difficult job. And I think it's because of our support and that we're there and we have regular follow-up and we check in very frequently. I think that that has been the key to the success, for sure. Uh, we've actually housed 193 people. Um, that's as of March uh, 2018. Um, but we've worked with over 249 uh, individuals um, just to get them to that point of even housing readiness. There's a multiple of different uh, issues or barriers that, that one faces and once somebody is housed that's not eliminating all of those issues, right? So and sometimes that's when a lot of that stuff comes to the forefront because even though it's a positive change, it's a very scary change for individuals. Folks fall through the cracks all the time and particularly Indigenous folks who don't want to admit they need help and they're scared to ask for help because of colonization and the impacts. So they feel safe here, then we have to ensure that because we are uh, the place of first choice and last resort, that we make sure that everybody is healthy.